Welcome to the Creative Pugza. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to create a vintage postcard in Affinity Photo. The first postcard that was used commercially was created in 1861 by American printer John P. Carlton, who copyrighted it with Hyman Lippmann. The large letter postcards, like the one we will create in this video, were popular in the 1930s through the 1950s. These types of postcards had 3D letters, which were the name of the place. Inside of the 3D letters were images that represented scenic locations from that particular place. Also at the top of the card were the words greetings from. This type of postcard was created by German born printer Kurt Teich who had a printing company where he would print the linen textured postcards. First go to file new. Set the document units to inches. Set the width to 6 inches and the height to 4 inches. This is one of the common sizes for postcards. Then set the DPI dots per inches to 300. This is what you would use if you wanted to print the postcard. You can leave it at 72 if you don't want to print this. Also, you will change the color format to CMYK. Grab the artistic text tool from the tools panel. Type the city, state, or country you want to use for the postcard. I use Paris, France. Now select the text. Go to the font family and select the font you want to use. Make sure the font you want to use is a bold font. The font I'm using is called Bold B1SC. You can find a link to this font in the description of this video. Center the text in the middle of the document. We'll now add the images to the text. You can decide whether you want to use one image for the whole text or you can use multiple images for each of the words of your postcard. Search for images related to the city, state, or country you've chosen. The images used for this particular postcard of Paris are found in the description of this video. Go to File Open. Press Ctrl and select the five images you see on the screen, or whatever images you want to use. Drag the images onto the document, then close the dialog box. In the Layers panel, turn off all the other images except for the image of the Eiffel Tower. With the Move tool, take the Eiffel Tower image, or the first image you plan on using, and drag it inside of the text layer. The text layer will act as a clipping mask for the pictures. Next, go to the transform panel and turn on the lock aspect ratio. Then, take the move tool and resize the image the way you see it on the screen. To remove the overlapping that occurs on the other letter here, we'll mask it out. With the image still selected, click the mask layer icon in the layers panel to add a mask. Then, grab the paintbrush tool from the tools panel. Go to the swatches panel and make sure that the black is the active color. Next, go to the Brushes panel. Click on the basic brushes and select a round, soft brush. It doesn't really matter which brush you choose. Make sure the mask layer is selected in the Layers panel. Take the brush and go over the area where the image is overlapping onto the next letter. In the Layers panel, label the image layer P, or the first letter of your chosen city, state, etc. Select the second image you want to use and drag it into the text layer in the Layers panel. Turn the layer on. The image I'm using is of the Louvre Museum. Resize the image the way you see it on the screen. Now click the mask layer icon in the layers panel. Make sure the mask is inside of the image layer. Then grab the paintbrush tool again. Make sure the black color is active in the swatches panel. Take the tool and mask out any overlapping part. To increase the size of the brush, press the right bracket key. Press the left bracket key to decrease the size of the brush. Label this layer A in the Layers panel. In the Layers panel, select the third image you want to use and drag it inside of the text layer and turn the image layer on. I'm using the food picture. Grab the Move tool and resize the image. For this particular image, there was no need to mask anything. We'll do the same steps for the last two words of pairs. I'm going to speed up the video for this part. I placed the image of the French flag over the I and the picture of the Arc de Triumph was placed over the S. I also added a mask to both of these layers. Don't forget to label the layers in the Layers panel.
After you finish adding the image to the text, select the text layer. Grab the Mesh Warp tool from the Tools panel. The text layer will turn into a pixel layer. We want to warp the text and make it similar to the text from the Vintage Postcard. A lot of the text were somewhat wavy or curved and some of them were slightly tilted. Take the tool and start to warp the text. Hit apply when you're done making your adjustments. Select the text layer. In the layers panel, click the FX layers effect icon. Check the outline box and select it. Set the color to white and set the radius to five pixels. By default, the blend mode should be normal. Alignment is outside and the fill style is solid color. Also, the opacity is 100%. With the text layer still selected, click the Group Layers icon in the Layers panel. Since we're not able to add more than one outline effect to this layer, grouping the layer will allow us to add the outline effect to this layer again. Click the Layers Effect icon. Check the outline box and select it. The outline color should be black. Set the radius to 15 pixels and leave the other settings as is. Now go to File Open and select the Paper Texture Image. Copy the image and paste it onto the postcard document. Grab the Move tool and resize the image. I want to edit the background to get rid of some of the brownest tint of it. In the Layers panel, click the Adjustments icon and select the Curves Adjustment. Drag the adjustment inside of the texture layer. Select the left point and bring it slightly up. Place the point in the middle of the curve and drag it up. Then select the point on the right and drag it down. After that, click the Adjustments icon again. This time, select the Levels Adjustment. Make sure the adjustment is inside of the texture layer. Set the white level to 94%, the gamma to 0.9, and the output black level to 20%. Select the background layer in the Layers panel. Right-click on it and select Rasterize. This places all of our changes onto one layer. Drag this background layer beneath the text layer. Now we'll add the main image for the postcard. If you look at the vintage postcards, you'll notice that the images used for the cards have a border around them. So we first have to create a clipping mask for the image. In the Layers panel, click the Add Pixel Layer to add a new layer. Make sure this layer is between the background layer and the text layer. Grab the Rectangular Marquee tool from the Tools panel. Make sure the new layer we added is selected. Then take the tool and draw a rectangle. This will be for the clipping mask. Now grab the Flood Fill tool from the Tools panel. Take the tool and click inside of the rectangle we just created. This will fill the layer. The fill color doesn't matter since we won't be seeing it after we add the image. Press Ctrl and D to deselect the selection. Next, go to File Open and select the main image you want to use for the postcard. I selected the image with the Eiffel Tower in the background. Copy the image and paste it onto the postcard document. In the Layers panel, drag this image inside of the Filled Pixel layer, then resize the image. Click the Adjustments icon in the Layers panel. Select the Curves Adjustment. Drag the adjustment inside of the layer with our main image. I want to brighten the image a little. Select the point on the left and drag it up slightly. Right click on this group in the Layers panel and select Rasterize to place all the changes we made onto one layer. Then lower the opacity of this layer to 60%. We want the words of the postcard to be the focal point. Now select the text group. Press Ctrl and J to duplicate the group. Then right click on the duplicated group and select Rasterize. Uncheck the Preserve Layer FX box and select Rasterize. With the layer still selected, press Ctrl and click on the thumbnail of the layer so that all of the text is selected. Next, go to the Swatches panel and double-click the fill color to bring up the color chooser. Enter the following hex code, 002290. After that, go to the Edit menu and select Fill with Primary Color. This will fill the text with the color we added. Press Ctrl and D to deselect. Drag this layer beneath the original text layer in the Layers panel. Select the duplicated text layer, press and hold shift, then drag the layer diagonally down to the right. Make sure you don't have snapping turned on. 
Click the FX layer effect icon and check the outline box and select it. Set the rate as 10 pixels. The color should be black and the alignment should be outside. In the layers panel, click the add pixel layer to add a new layer. This layer should be at the top of everything. Grab the paintbrush tool from the tools panel. In the swatches panel, make sure the black color is selected. In the context toolbar, set the opacity, flow, and hardness to 100%. Lower the width of the brush to about 14 pixels. We want to make the text look more 3D, so we need to connect parts of the two text layers together. Take the brush and draw a line in the same spot you see on the screen. Select this layer and the two text layers. Press Ctrl and G to group the three layers together. Then label the group text. Next, select the text group layer. Click the FX Layers Effect icon in the Layers panel. Check the outer shadow box and select it. The blend mode should be multiplied by default. Set the opacity to 100%, radius to 10 pixels, offset to 15 pixels, and intensity to 50%. Set the angle to 300 degrees. The color should be black and the field knocks out shadow box should be checked. Your settings may be different depending on your text. We'll now add the other text to the postcard. Grab the artistic text tool from the tools panel. Place the cursor above the text to the left and type greetings from. Select the text and go to the font family. Choose a font that's in a cursive or a hand script type of font. The font I chose is called Dr. Sugiyama and you can find a link to this font in the description of the video. In the swatches panel, set the color of the text to white. Press Ctrl and J to duplicate the text layer. Place the duplicated layer below the Paris text on the right. Type the city of love in the duplicated text layer. Set the color of this text to the following hex code. Now select the first text layer we created. Then go to the tools panel and select the mesh warp tool. Warp the text so that it matches the top part of the bigger text that you warped earlier. Hit apply when you're done making changes. Now select the duplicated text layer. Then grab the mesh warp tool. Warp this text so that it matches the bottom part of the bigger text. In the layers panel, click the add pixel layer icon. Make sure this layer is at the top of everything. Double click on the fill color in the swatches panel to bring up the color chooser. Enter the following color code, FDB138. Then go to the edit menu and select fill with primary color to fill the pixel layer. Set the blend mode of the layer to multiply and lower the opacity to 35%. This adds a sepia tone. The final vintage element we'll add to this is a halftone filter. This will make the postcard look like it's a print, which will then make it look very realistic. Select the Fill Pixel Layer, then click the Live Filters icon in the Layers panel. Set the Screen to Color and the Dot to Cosine. Set the Cell Size to 5 and the Contrast to 80. And this is how to create a vintage postcard in Affinity Photo. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload. Thank you for watching.